Welcome back. It is Wednesday, March the 27th. My guest in this segment is Judy Jackson. Judy is a filmmaker. She's gone around the world making documentary films about many, many things. Uh, we're going to be talking about a film you made about the migrant crisis that we're all hearing about. It's called Walk With Us. So welcome, Judy. Thank you. No, I've just finished it. I'm just back from Mexico, where I filmed the, one of the, the migrant caravans and the migrants are passing through Mexico from Central America. It's a real exodus, and it's actually terrifying when you think of the extent of it. Um, of course, we all know that they're being not being welcomed in America, which is where they have a dream of going. Everybody in Central America seems to dream of living in the United States. I'm not quite sure why. Um, and they're being called by Trump rapists, criminals, everything. And as anyone will see in this film, they're just very poor, desperate people who would like a future for their children somewhere in the world. So what are the main countries that people are coming from and why is there this exodus from these countries? Um, basically from Central America, and there's another big caravan just started off today actually, 1,500 from Honduras. Uh, they're also coming from Guatemala and El Salvador. These are all countries that had crises and civil wars in the 80s. And most of them had policies authoritarian governments, dictatorships which were backed by the United States. In Guatemala there was a genocide, in Honduras there was a lot of killing and a lot of, um, well the Contra War was actually created in Honduras, so it was actually destabilized totally by the United States and ever since that time those policies have just eliminated and excluded more and more people. The rich are very rich, Drugs have come in. The governments are actually, you don't quite, ever quite know who's doing drugs and who's just a government minister. Um, it's awful, corruption, impunity. And the gangs are now threatening these very poor people. So if you own a house, they'll ask you to pay rent each month to the gang. And to you can't, gang. to the gang, or, and they'll kill you if you don't. So we met people whose families have been killed. So they're just leaving. And whereas in the 80s, there were lots of refugees and I filmed those movements, they did all go back. These people don't want to go back. There's nothing there for them. Um, it's, it's really, really, well, it's awful, yeah. You know, it's, interest, what, it's, it's interesting to me that these countries have been destabilized by the United States, and yet in the whole story of the months that, that our media has been talking about these caravans, that most central fact is never mentioned why these people are being forced to flee and who's behind it and it is not the people of the United States but the lunatics who run the United States because they want to control all these nations and steal their wealth and they don't care about the people and now the people are on the move and they're using that against yeah. them as well yeah. I mean my, my other theory and I think it's it's a worldwide one is this is because of inequality yes. I mean the, I filmed in Guatemala in the 80s when the, when the war was going on, the civil war, or the uncivil war, I call it. And there were eight families that ruled the country. Today, there's eight families that rule the country. They, took, they take their money offshore, they put it in banks, they don't invest in the country. There's no jobs for young people. They don't care if people don't get education, or poor people don't get education, or hospitals, or anything like that. So there's, there's I mean, inequality is really a striking feature in, in those countries. Is is there anything positive that is is there a hope down down there or, or is it just coming apart and and the president of mexico has a plan ah, yes. that he wants to um invest a lot of money in the south of mexico to create jobs to build a biosphere so people could come and work there he also wants investment into those countries from which people are leaving the question is how would that investment be handled because you can't invest directly into the countries because it'll just go to the rich people and you never see it again. It needs to be an investment that is done with a great deal of thought right on the ground to create jobs. Nobody wants to leave their home. They'd like, they'd like to stay there if they could. Yeah. Judy, we're going to stop and we're going to show a few minutes of the video. Maybe you can just tell us what we're going to see. Yeah, Walk With Us, um, I made down in Mexico, like I said. It's about a safe house. There's 17 safe houses across Mexico where people who are migrating can go and get like three days of rest, 
maybe fed, maybe washed their clothes. And it's seen through the eyes of a pastor who runs a safe house in Salaya. It's called Walk With Us. Entonces, eh, acordé con mi esposa y mis hijos eh, traer alimento para ellos. Empezamos con una pequeña ollita de arroz, guisado y frijoles y nos, nos íbamos desbastados y tristes porque no alcanzaba para todos. Y después veía que llegaban personas lastimadas y enfermas, entonces hablábamos a la ambulancia. Y después nos dimos cuenta que ellos necesitaban dónde bañarse <ríe> y dónde dormir. Y empezamos a buscar un albergue. O sea, una cosa nos llevó a otra, una cosa nos llevó a otra. Fue como una cascada de, de, de necesidades. ¿Qué es lo que quieren ellos? ¿Qué es lo que quieren nuestros hermanos migrantes? Lo que quieren nuestros hermanos migrantes es lo que ustedes quieren. Tener una buena familia, un buen techo, un buen trabajo, que sus hijos vayan a la escuela, a la universidad, que sean alguien en la vida. Es lo que ellos nada más quieren, o sea, lo mismo que nosotros queremos. ¿Qué es lo que sucede? Pareciera que en este mundo no hay lugar para los pobres, ¿verdad? El racismo, el, el, la xenofobia, o sea, el que no no se les trate por igual, el que se les, se les ve como inferiores y, o el que simple y sencillamente no los queremos en nuestro país, como si, como si fuéramos dueños. Sí. ¿A quién ayudan? A nadie. Vaya, tú tienes la hija, la mujer de Pepe Lobo, estaba encargada de una ONG, se robó todo el dinero, dinero que es para el pobre, para ayudar. Nos dimos cuenta que de, de Europa, de, sí, de cada otro lado de Europa, la mayoría de los estudiantes que se reúnen universitarios, lo que, el, el, el trabajo social que ellos hacen es hacer ventas, recolectar dinero, mandarlo a Honduras para que el pobre se pueda ir con eso. Nosotros no nos damos cuenta de eso. ¿Qué hacen con eso? Se lo roban. Se lo roban los gobiernos. Allá el pobre sigue siendo pobre y entre más pobre esté, mejor. Los gobiernos lo siguen gobernando porque es pobre, porque es analfabeta, porque no sabe nada. Los hijos de ellos lo mandan para Europa, para París, para Francia a estudiar. Entonces, ¿qué pasa? Ellos vienen bien preparados a seguir gobernando un pueblo ignorante, un pueblo que no se ha preparado, un pueblo que, que lo que hace es la agricultura. Entonces, en mi caso yo voy, ¿me entiendes? Por eso. Buscar que mis hijos se superen y que el día de mañana no tengan que venir acá. Si vienen, queda por avión. Saca tu visa y vete a dar tu vuelta. ¿Ya? Entonces, por eso andamos aquí, la mayoría creo que por eso andamos aquí. Mi pensamiento, ¿verdad? De que en medio de todo lo que dice que no va a dejar entrar, que va a agarrar a, a bala viva a la gente, bueno, en primer lugar, hay derechos humanos. Estados Unidos es un país que ha respetado las leyes, ha respetado los derechos humanos y no creo que esto sea un motivo para que se vaya a tirar sobre las leyes. Entonces yo pienso que en medio de todo, Dios en su misericordia tiene que dar una salida. Para que una madre salga de su país con sus hijos, arriesgándolos. O sea, tienen que abrir los ojos a la gente y ver de que en realidad la cosa está, está seria, está fea. Pero en esa caravana ha venido una madre con cuatro hijos y embarazada de otro. Para que ustedes son mujeres. Para que una madre tome una decisión de esa, que la cosa tiene que estar fea. Sí. Otras vienen, vienen huyendo de las maras. Yo encontré una en Palenque, me dice, mire, me dice, yo vengo, me dice, porque huyendo vivo en las torres en San Pedro Sula, impuesto de guerra, me iban a matar. Tomó el hijo de ella, dejó el otro y se vino. Ahí va. O sea, para que una mujer agarre valor, que sabe que la pueden secuestrar para prostituirla aquí en México, que la pueden violar, la pueden matar. Agua. You 
are very welcome. Buena suerte. Hello. Buena suerte. And they are going to San Luis Potosí. So we are helping this group that nobody is helping them. Sí, hemos sido amenazados. Hemos sido, he sido amenazado de muerte dos veces. Hace poquito hemos sido amenazados por, lo, por ayudar a la caravana. Hemos sido muy criticados. Eh, en el sector religioso hemos sido también criticados porque eh, no se ve bien, eh, aparentemente. Entonces, eh, no se ve muy bien también ayudarlos. Entonces, es es romper con estructuras sociales, religiosas, culturales y, y es, es ir como ir en, eh, eh, contra la corriente. Eh, me empiezo a dar cuenta que, que, que Dios habla mucho sobre los migrantes, muchísimo. De antemano, Israel fue un un, una nación migrante, y lo ha sido, de refugiados. Entonces, y vemos la, la migración marcada mucho en las escrituras. Entonces empiezo a sentir como un, un llamado a esto también. Un llamado a, a apoyar a nuestros hermanos migrantes. Algo que yo, yo, yo me he dado cuenta es que a Dios le interesa. Dios es un Dios de justicia. Conocemos al Dios de amor. Conocemos al Dios de misericordia, de perdón. Pero yo creo que la gente no conoce al Dios de justicia. Y entonces la justicia es, hace que a las personas las tratemos por igual. Pero pensamos que la justicia es como si fuera el verdugo. Y no, 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 es, tampoco no es por ahí. El Dios de la justicia quiere decir que debe de haber equidad. Y entraría un, el, lo que yo le llamo, el, es el sistema capitalista. Un sistema capitalista donde solamente vivimos consumiendo, consumiendo, tratando de, de tener la mejor casa, el mejor carro, la mejor marca de ropa. Y es donde segregamos a los pobres. Normalmente los migrantes son pobres. No, el término es aporofobia, quiere decir miedo a los pobres. El miedo a los pobres. Yeah, welcome back. So that was uh, a few minutes of the video, The Migrant Crisis, Walk With Us. So, uh, Judy, maybe you can tell us a bit more about what you saw in Mexico when you were making this video. Well, I was very much connected with this one safe house, which was being run very beautifully and with a great deal of love towards the migrants. Migrants did come in who'd been beaten up. We were hearing that I think 90% of the women who were migrating had been raped. Um, there's a lot of violence on the journey, there's extortion, migrants can disappear, they can die in the desert trying to get into the States. It's really hard now to get into the States, I'm sure we've all heard all these stories, but they face enormous problems. Is, I guess the hope of going to the United States is there's nowhere else. I mean, if. What can you do? Well, I, th I think, I mean, I think they need to rethink that a bit. Yeah. But, but everybody has got a relative who went to the States and did good. And you can earn like 10 times more a day, more than that, than you can at home. And then those people send back money. And so in Central America, you do see these, what we call casas de remisas, which are houses built with the money that's coming back, remittance money. So everybody has this dream that they could do that too. You could go there, you could send back money, you could have this house and eventually you could retire in it. But the dream is not for everybody now. What's the feeling towards the migrant people in Mexico itself? In Mexico, when the first caravan came through, the very poor people in Chiapas, and they are very poor, turned out in droves to feed them and help them, help them find lodging, give them, uh, give them clothes and food. But now, with the new caravans, they're not liking it. It's turning against them now. And, and the police are actually guarding them so they don't go into the towns of these poor people. So it's, it's changing, I think. Of course, no. because it's just too much. Yeah. It's destabilizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you wanted to talk a little bit about the, the situation worldwide with, with migrants. Yeah. 
I mean, throughout the world now, we're seeing this problem with migration. And, and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights says that everybody has the right to seek asylum in another country. But it doesn't, you don't have the right to arrive in another country. So the problem is, how do, how do we get through that? Um, there is a new, the UN's just had a new declaration on migration, which is trying to arrange paths for migration to be done in a calm and sensible manner. But we're not seeing that in the world. And my feeling is that migrants are being picked out. Migrants, immigrants, refugees are being picked out us them, while well, we're us and you're them. And there's this hatred around it, xenophobia everywhere, Brexit in England, Hungary won't admit refugees. Um, 4,000 have drowned in the, in, in the Mediterranean in the last year, coming across from Libya. Awful stories, awful stories. Um, Wouldn't it be nice if, if the people around the United States would stop destroying these countries? I mean, Libya was yeah. destroyed for no reason whatsoever. And now it's, it's, it's a nightmare situation yeah, over it's there. Situation. Yeah. I, I've, un yeah. I've read that there were millions of refugees from Syria, Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, Libya, millions, by the millions living in Turkey and Lebanon. Yeah. And stuck. People who've left halfway to, to get to Europe, people stuck in yeah. Greece, people, people stuck in Macedonia. Wouldn't it's it be nice if they just stopped destroying these countries? And, and yet nobody will ever say that. Uh, the European governments yeah. won't say it, our government won't say it. America, stop destroying these countries. Yeah. The other side of that, though, is that advanced countries have got much reduced birth rates, yes. and we need migrants. Yes. Canada's already saying that we need, and we're going to have an orderly influx of migrants. These countries who are rejecting them actually also need them, so it's very bizarre. Yeah. It's a bizarre situation. Um, let's just hope it gets better for everybody, because it has to. I mean, we're just circling the drain here, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. Judy, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.